So if you're going to put your face over it like I am to look inside, you might want to hold your breath a bit. Otherwise you're going to inhale onions. And make yourself cry. One more whirl here. I think we got it. Okay. Get that out of there. Get our onions into our soup mixture here. Again, they get a point all get stuck on the bottom. And I'm breathing into it as I do this, which is not so good. Okay. Okay, so there we go so far. So now we're going to add some other stuff to this, and I know you're going to probably want some measurements, so I'll measure it out for you. I sometimes end up being the kind of person that just drizzle stuff on, but we'll see. Okay, so we're going to do one tablespoon of really good quality organic extra virgin olive oil. We're going to do a tablespoon of this red wine vinegar that I always have hanging around because I put it into salads. We're going to do just, you know, a dab of salt. I would say maybe that's like half a teaspoon of salt. And I keep measuring pepper. I just do it by grind. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six grinds of pepper. Mix this all around. Okay, so now we're going to add in this organic strained tomato. I found at the grocery store. Let's do a quarter cup at a time here and see how it looks because you know what I like to experiment as I go. I'm basically thinking until it turns really red is when I'm going to stop so I'll add another so this will be a half a cup so far. It's always good if there's leftover of that stuff because then I can make another batch of this next week when it's blazing hot. That's looking good to me. Okay, before I taste it though, I need to add one more item here, which is the garlic. And sometimes people use a garlic press, which I always think is cheating. I thought I had one, but I don't. So you know what? I'm just going to quickly mince this garlic. So if you don't know how to do a mince a clove of garlic, just take a peek here, if you can. You're going to use the side that is put together like this, that's sort of held together. You're going to want to not cut that side. So cut off with this little bit on the other end that doesn't look good. Cut that off. And then you're going to want to start slicing Sort of like you're slicing a tomato or an onion. If you can, try and slice it the other way as well without cutting yourself. And then just start creating little bits. This prevents you from having to chop, 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 chop. And you know what? I've lucked out without cutting my fingers off. But if it freaks you out, you can just start out like this and end like this. So you're going to want to make little, little chunks because raw garlic is very, very, very potent. And that's what's going to be in here since we're not cooking anything in this soup. Okay. So we're going to put in our one clove of garlic. You know what? I think I'm just going to do the one clove. Because that is going to be a very strong raw garlic. Okay. So. I might want to give this taste before I add anything more to it. And at the very end when I serve it up, I'm going to put some cherry tomatoes on top, maybe a bit of pepper. And the question is I need to find a spoon to taste it with. Here we go. I'll use this one. Okay. Mmm! Oh, it's delicious! Wow, Ooh, I'm very proud of myself. Oh wow. One thing is absolutely just perfect. Mm. So now I'm gonna dish it up. 
So now it's time to dish up our really, really yummy gazpacho into a beautiful, beautiful bowl. I have these gorgeous bowls that I believe I got at um, Williams Sonoma. I believe that a single gal's way in the life is that you gotta have beautiful serving wear. Because God forbid you do have a wonderful, handsome guy over for dinner. You don't wanna look like you've just inherited stuff from your mother, or your grandmother for that matter. So it's very important that you invest in a few good pieces, I think, for your kitchen, if you can. So, to really dress this up, I'm going to take a few of these really colorful um, tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, put them on here. We might do a yellow, maybe a little, maybe a, a red one. Keep the orange for a salad. It's probably not the best way to be cutting them, but what the heck. Okay, so we'll do that. And then, I'm going to head over to my little garden over here with my parsley and I'm just gonna take off a couple sprigs. We didn't mix any into the soup, which I guess we should have done, but you know what? There's no harm in mixing it in now, so I'll take a few extra, mix it right in, and I'll show you a little trick on something my mom taught me on how to deal with parsley. So we'll see, let's see how much you want to take here. There we go. So I got a little bit here to garnish with. So I'm going to garnish my bowl like that with a little bit. It's very, very, very important that you make all your food look really, really, really good. Uh, my uncle Johnny taught me that, that you just always want to make the food look good. Even if it's just for yourself, it just really makes you feel very accomplished in the kitchen. Now I'm going to show you a trick on um, how to cut up, um, how to very finely mince parsley. All you're going to do is you're going to take some parsley, a handful or so. You're going to put it into a glass, a little glass like this. You're going to take a pair of um, scissors and you're going to just put the scissors in the glass and you're just going to cut, 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 cut. And before you know it, before you know it, they're little pieces. How simple is that? Okay, so I'm going to dump these in to our soup mixture so that the next bowl I have tomorrow at lunch has some parsley in it. Yummy, yummy, yummy. So here I have my really yummy meal just for myself, which is fine, but it looks beautiful. I have my gazpacho that's garnished in a very pretty way to make it look special. And I also have on my little miniature cutting board here just some pieces of bread with butter and cheese. This is red hen bread, which is my favorite bread. It's basically the only bread that I eat these days. Um, I forget what this one is called, but they're all really, really, really good. Um, if you want to keep the bread longer than a day, which is normally the way it was made to be eaten, I just put it in a freezer, Ziploc bag, and just make sure I get as much of the air out as possible. And normally it lasts at least a week. I also have on here some Cabot cheddar, which I found at Healthy Living the other day, and it was actually kind of neat. They have this thing called cheddar trim, which is just the odd ends of the cheddar that might not be perfect up to standards on a block of cheddar that they cut off, and it's really, really cheap. So I got a big bag of these, I think they were two big chunks in it for less than $3. And I also am using really good quality butter from Vermont. Butter and Cheese Company. They make really, really good butter in a French style, European style, and it's a little bit more than your regular sticks of butter, but if you're gonna put butter on a sandwich or anything where you're gonna really be tasting the butter on a, something raw, I would recommend using Vermont Butter and Cheese. And then if you're gonna be cooking with it, then, you know, or baking or anything like that, maybe then use the sticks of butter, something organic like a cabot or something like that. So. It's been really my pleasure showing you how to make a really yummy gazpacho this evening. I'm going to put the rest of my bowl in the fridge covered with saran wrap. And I know tomorrow at lunch it's going to taste even better after it has sat in the fridge for a while. And I might even have another bowl of it on Friday for lunch. And maybe I can convince one of my friends to come over and have some as well. So have a wonderful evening and I'll see you next time on Cooking Single with Sarah.